guys welcome back hope you are doing well before we get started with this video i wanted to show you guys a brand new product that i just released on my website it is the swift ui threads pro clone so i have the app up here guys and it is available on my website for purchase right now just go to stephancodes.com shop and the link is in the description for to this video and let me just show you what the app looks like really quick. It's pretty awesome. It is an exact working replica of the Threads clone. So here would be your user feed. You can like Threads, you can reply to Threads, and these Threads are only populated with uh, Threads from people that you follow. Uh, you have this user searching function. You have the ability to create and upload Threads. You have a full in-app notification system for likes, replies, follows. You can filter them and all of that good stuff. There's some really cool animations. And then you also have uh, the user profile feature. You can edit your user profile info, um, and then you can view the user's threads and their replies all in their profile. And then you also have like a menu screen where you can log out, log in and sign up with the app. So if you guys want access to this, it's a really, really awesome product. Just go over and head over to my website at stephancodes.com to check it out. And guys, it is a hundred bucks right now, but if you were to become a member and sign up for the diamond membership, you get access to that for just $39.99 a month, as well as everything else on the website, all the products, all the courses, everything. So guys, check out the diamond membership. It's a ton of value for just $39.99 a month. Uh, but now that I have shamelessly plugged my uh, website and courses, let's go ahead and jump back into our messenger clone and get started with this video. So to get started with this video, guys, I want to address an issue that we currently have in our application. So what I want you to do is uh, follow along with me here. Go to your profile page and log out the currently logged in user. And then I want you to log in with a different user. And we're going to notice something interesting here. So let's log in as Batman. I was previously logged in as the Joker. So if I log in, everything works just fine. But if I go to my profile, you guys will notice that I'm still displaying Heath Ledger's information. And that's a problem. Right, so the reason for that, guys, if we go into our auth service, is because the only time we are fetching the currently logged in user's information is when we initialize this auth service. What we need to do is call this same line of code after the user logs in or they sign up so that we refetch the currently logged in user's information. Um, and then it will display the correct information based on who we have logged in as. So this is only happening on auth, uh, auth service initialization, and this only gets initialized once per app session. So if you were to kill the app like that, swipe up and then go back to it, everything will be fine, but this is a bug nonetheless. We need to introduce some more functionality to make sure that this is working smoothly. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this line of code, guys, and we're gonna create a private function down at the bottom here called load current user data and just go ahead and paste that in there right so now what we're going to do is replace this right here with that line of code we're going to say load current user data and then here after we log in and set the user session we're going to say load current user data and then down here as well we'll say load current user data so uh, now that we've done that um, there's one more thing i want us to do in the sign out function so um, we are setting this user session property to nil, guys. Just to be super safe, I want us to also wipe out this current user property we have on our user service. So just in case anything in the app is hanging on to the previously currently logged in user, we wanna make sure we reset this property to nil as well. So all we have to do is go and say user service dot shared dot current user equals nil just like that. So now our, our, our authentication flow should be fully complete now, right? So I don't think we need to add the dollar sign there. Yeah, so that should be good to go. So now every time we log in or sign a user up, it will update the currently logged in user's information and display that information accurately in our application. So let's go ahead and run this code, guys, and just test this out really quick. And then what I want us to do is create a couple more users so that we can ultimately accomplish the goal of this video, which is to fetch and load all of the users in our app here so that we can eventually be able to tap on one of these guys and go over to our chat view. So really quickly, let's just log out 
from our Batman profile and log in with our Joker profile. Log in, we go here, and we notice that that updates correctly. So now um, what I'm gonna do off camera really quick, guys, is just sign up a couple more users here. You guys should do the same. And then we'll come back uh, to the video and the instructions once we get those users signed up and then we'll go over the process of how to load all of those users into our create message view. All right, guys, so as we can see here in our Firebase console, I have created a couple more users. So got like Batman, uh, Black Panther, Iron Man, Captain America, blah, 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 right? Um, and this is just so that we can actually have a couple different users showing up here and we can start chats with a couple different users. It's good to have at least five or six people registered in the app for testing purposes. So now that we've done that, let's go over what we need to do to actually fetch all of those users and display them in our new message view here. So we're gonna go back to our user service and we are gonna add a function to fetch all of those users. So let's go ahead and just delete that print statement. We don't need that anymore. And let's write a function to say just fetch all users. Async throws, and this is actually going to return an array of users. And we are just gonna um, say let snapshot equal try await firestore.firestore.collection users.getDocuments. So this is just gonna give us back all of the users in this users collection here. We're going to this users collection and just getting all of these documents. And then we're gonna construct our user object using the data we get back from each one of these documents. So then we're just gonna say let users equal uh, snapshot.documents.compactMap. Open up your brackets and say try oops, with a question mark, zero dot data as user dot self, and then say return users. So, yep, that's good to go. So that is all we need to do to fetch all of the users in our app, guys, literally three lines of code. You could even shorten that up to saying return that guy right there. We don't need to store that in a property. So we're literally fetching all of the users in our app with just two lines of code, which is super, super slick, right? So now we just need to go over where exactly we're gonna utilize that function and how we're gonna display all of this user information here. So let's go and find out where that is. I believe we need to go to our new message folder. Yep, so we have our new message view. And you guys will notice that we are looping through this like static range of numbers here and just displaying some mock user data. So what we need to do is create a view model here, call that user service function we just created and pass all of those users to this for each loop right here. So let's go ahead and get started with that. We just need to create two folders here and one for views and one for our view models, right? So let's go ahead and shove that new message view up in the views folder, create a view model here, and it's just gonna be a Swift file. We're gonna say, uh, new message view model and pretty straightforward. It's just going to be a class a okay, new message view model, which is an observable object. We're going to have a published variable for our users. And this is ultimately what we're going to pass over to our view. We're going to create an, initial, an initialization function. That's going to uh, trigger that user service uh, function to fetch all of those users. So let's write a function for that. We'll say func fetch users, async throws. And all we need to do guys, I think it's just one line of code. We can just say self.users equals user service dot shared dot fetch all users. And I don't think we need to route this through the shared instance. Um, so actually let's say try await. So really quickly guys, let's just go back to our user service guy and let's just make this a static function. Um, and then if we go back here, we don't need to access this fetch all users function through the shared instance. The purpose of that shared instance, guys, was to make sure that we call this function and update the current user val uh, variable here uh, via means of this shared instance. This guy is just a generic like fetch all our users. We don't need to utilize any of that through a shared instance there. So that's looking good. Um, Let's go back to this view model now and just call this function. So we're gonna say task uh, try await fetch users. 
And now we need to create an instance of our view model inside of our view. So we are going to go here and say at state private var view model equals uh, new message view model. And that actually needs to be a state object, guys. That's my bad. And now we can go here and say view model dot users inside of this for each loop. We can delete this ID property because all of our users conform to the identifiable protocol. So that looks really good. And here we're just going to go ahead and pass in that user that we're getting from our for loop and replace this hard coded text with user dot full name. And let's go ahead and run our code guys. And this should literally be all we have to do to display those users in that list. So that looks absolutely beautiful. We're getting all of the users back that we have in our application. There is, however, one more thing we need to do. We don't want our currently logged in user to show up in this list, right? Because we don't want to be able to start a chat with ourselves. So let's just go ahead and filter that out so we can avoid any weird errors that that might cause. Another thing, we do need to make sure that this fetch all users function is, uh, has that main actor macro. So let's go back here uh, to our user service and say at main actor. Just like that, and that will solve that problem. And what we can do, guys, is um, there's two things you can do. You can either filter that out here, or you could filter it out in the user service. Um, I'm going to do the filtering here, basically removing the currently logged in user from the array. Um, because our user service function shouldn't have any like business logic associated with it. Um, this is just in charge of fetching all the users, right? So what we're going to do is go back to our view model and do some filtering here. So let's go ahead and just say guard let current UID equal auth dot auth dot current user dot UID else return. And we need to import Firebase. And we are going to say let users, or sorry, make that a var equal try await and get all the users. And then we'll say self.users equals users.filter 0.id is not equal to our current UID. And I believe we could actually just make that a let. So I know that might be a little confusing. There is a lot that's uh, being thrown at you here. But basically, all we're doing, guys, is we're storing the result of this fetch all users guy inside of this users property here. And then we are setting our class level users property that's going to get published to our view by filtering out the current user from that array right here. So we're just saying, hey, apply some filter and make sure that the ID that we're looking at is not equal to the current user's ID. So our self.users guy will be equal to this guy, but with that filter applied. So we're just basically removing the currently logged in user. Um, so now if we go back and run our application once more and we go back to the screen, you guys will notice that I'm missing the currently logged in user. And that looks really good. Um, we're still getting this error here, guys. Let's go ahead and apply um, main actor to our class here. And let's see, I believe that we can remove it from the user service function. So let's try to, to, to set it up that way and see if that works. Um, let's see. So let's go back to our new message view model. Yeah, so now we're good to go. Um, our user service function call is no longer directly updating our main thread, right? If we were to say self.users equals that, then that would cause that problem. But we're just storing it in a local property here. And then when we try to update our main thread by saying self.users is equal to this filtering function, that's when we're actually updating the main thread. So that's why this class needs to be marked with main actor. So a little bit of threading complications there. I hope that makes sense to you guys. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this video. In the next one, we're going to go over how to actually click on one of these guys and have it navigate over to our chat view. So that's going to be really interesting and really fun. We'll see you guys there. Peace.